Now, a year and a half ago, Barack and I each began a journey to make history and to remake America. On Sunday, November 4th, late in the day, CBS quietly posted an odd video. It was a suppressed excerpt from an interview conducted with Barack Obama almost two months before on September 12th, shortly after he had made comments about the attack on the Benghazi consulate in the Rose Garden. Since our founding, the United States has been a nation that respects all faiths. We reject all efforts to denigrate the religious beliefs of others. But there is absolutely no justification to this type of senseless violence. The clip clearly shows Obama doing two things. One, refusing to call the attack on the Benghazi consulate terrorism, which contradicts his statement in the second presidential debate that he called it a terrorist act from the beginning. Mr. President, this morning uh, you went out of your way to avoid the use of the word terrorism in connection right. with the Libya attack. Right. Do you believe that this was a, a terrorist attack? Well, it's too early to know uh, exactly how this came about, what group uh, was involved, but obviously uh, it was an attack on Americans. and. We are going to be working with the Libyan government to make sure that we bring these folks to justice uh, one way or the other. Should we get that for the record? Because it took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. It, 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 he did, in, in fact, sir. So let me, let me call it an act of Can terror. Can you say that a little louder, Candy? But it also shows at the same time that Obama didn't believe it was a mob turned violent caused by some obscure anti-Islam video which figured so predominantly for two weeks in the Obama administration's narration of the attack. But what sparked the recent violence was the airing on the internet of a very hateful, very offensive video. This video is disgusting and reprehensible. That is what we saw play out in the last two weeks. There's a crude and disgusting video sparked outrage throughout the Muslim world. It's been described as a mob action but there are reports that uh, they were very heavily armed uh, with grenades. As, uh, as, as that I said, doesn't sound like your normal demonstration. Right. As I said, we're, we're still investigating exactly what happened. I don't want to jump the gun on this. Keep in mind that when Obama gave this interview, as we later learned, he had watched the attack in real time with live video from a drone from the beginning. Then he had received several emails that went directly to the Situation Room beginning less than an hour after the attack, describing the attack as terrorist, even naming the group, Ansar al-Sharia, as responsible. What is clear is that Obama knew exactly what happened in Benghazi when he gave the interview, but that he wasn't sure what lie he was going to perpetuate. When it was decided that the administration would blame a mob rioting over an obscure anti-Muslim video, the portion of the 60 Minutes interview that didn't agree with his story needed to be suppressed. What we know now is that the reason for the cover-up was that Obama had been shipping Libyan weapons to Al-Qaeda and Muslim Brotherhood-linked rebels in Syria, literally arming our enemies, which amounts to treason, and that Ambassador Stevens had been the point man in this and an investigation into the attack of the consulate would have revealed this. I believe that much of this will come back to weapons and the movement of weapons out of Libya to Turkey and then into Syria, and what the United States knew about the movement of those weapons, and whether it did anything to stop the movement of those weapons. I have one piece of data that says Ambassador Stevens was in Benghazi on 9-11 to negotiate a weapons transfer to get these SA-7s out of the hands of... Astonishingly, in April of 2012, that same Jew-hating, Christian-hating, Muslim Brotherhood was welcomed into our country, the United States of America, into our capital, Washington, D.C., by President Barack Hussein Obama. And not only did he welcome this organization that ought to be declared a terrorist organization, but he gave them 1.5 billion taxpayer dollars to make history and to remake America. And it's time that we do not provide military aid, abetting, and assistance to people that want to destroy Christians, that want to destroy Israelis, 
and that want to put the world in turmoil and have everyone living exactly as they dictate. If there is one thing that has distinguished the United States of America from the rest of the world, it is our unwavering belief in freedom. And if there is one thing that protects and upholds that freedom, it is the Constitution of the United States.